Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Joshua, and we're going to be starting in chapter 14 this lesson. But before we begin, our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord is Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we begin here in chapter 14, we see that in verses 1 through 5, in these verses, we see people who were involved in the building of the land. That's We see that in verse 1. I'm going to read it here in a minute. And we also see the explanation of not giving Levi any land of an in, for an inheritance and giving Levi's portion to one of the two tribes of Joseph. So let's read verses 1 through 5, and it says here, And these are the countries uh, which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half tribe on the other side of Jordan, but unto the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore, they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, except cities to dwell in, with their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. And the Lord commanded Moses, I'm sorry, as the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. So we see that Levi's portion was given to the tribes of, of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, and they were supposed to just inherit uh, cities, and God was their portion. Now we start in uh, verse 6, and in verses 6 through 15, we come to Caleb's inheritance. Caleb's inheritance. And <clears throat> we're going to read through some of the verses of Scripture in a little bit. But at first, I want to say this, that it has now been 45 years since Caleb and Joshua and the 10, the ten spies returned to Moses to give him their report of the land. Caleb and Joshua, they remember the fear and the disbelief and the discouragement that the ten spies brought Moses and brought to Moses and to the children of Israel, and how the children of Israel feared and they wanted to return to Egypt. And they also remember how their words of faith in God's promise and encouragement had no effect on the people. But instead, the people wanted to stone them. But 45 years ago, listen, 45 years ago, Caleb got a promise from God himself. Not from Moses, not from Joshua or anyone else. Caleb got a promise from God himself that he, that God would not only make sure that both Caleb and Joshua would enter into the promised land, but that Caleb would be given the land whereon he walked. And that's seen in Numbers 14, verse 24 and verse 30. God told him, I'm going to, uh, you're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you that land. You're going to, you're going to, walk into that land, and Caleb, the land that you walked on, I'm going to give that to you. It is now 45 years later, after that disastrous mistake by the children of Israel, 
a good portion of the promised land has been taken and it is time to divide divide up the land between the tribes the tribe of judah is the first to come to joshua and leading the tribe is caleb the children of judah honor caleb by giving him his possession first before the rest of the tribe. Either part or all of the land that God promised to Caleb was still inhabited, not only by Canaanites, but also by the giants, the Anakims. Therefore, Caleb needed to drive them out of his land. So the portion of land that God promised to Caleb, <laughs> it still had Canaanites in it and giants in it. As Caleb comes to speak to, with Joshua, let's look at a few important lessons that we can learn from what Caleb says to Joshua. Now, Caleb, number one, the first lesson we learn is that Caleb's life was built upon, upon the promises of God for him. You know, in verses 12 through 6, five times in his request to, to Joshua, Caleb uses the words, the Lord, pro, the Lord spoke, the Lord spoke. Let's read verses 6 through 12, and it says, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, the Kenizzite, said unto him, said unto Joshua, You know the things that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and, and you in Kadesh Barnea. Forty, Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon your feet have trodden shall be thine for shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four, uh, eighty-five years old, and as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so my strength is now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spoke in that day. For you have heart for you, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be that the Lord be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Now, again, five, uh, sorry, five times in that portion of Scripture, Joshua says, what? The Lord spoke. The Lord spoke. You know, the very first time uh, Caleb uses that, he includes Joshua in it as one who received the promise from God. We see that in the last part of verse 6. But the, but the other four times that Caleb says the Lord spoke, he includes only himself because he was laying hold of God's promises for himself. For four, Listen, for 45 years, Caleb hid God's promise in his heart. Every day he remembered God's promise and he remembered his portion of the land and what it looked like. For 45 years, Caleb imagined 
what he would do with the land and where he would build houses and barns and plant fields and keep sheep and goats and oxen and camels and whatever else. Caleb not only believed in God's promise, but he lived in it. Caleb not only believed in God's promise, but he lived in the promise of God. Listen, do we live in the promises of God? I know we do we I know we believe them, but do we live in them? Caleb lived it for 45 years. He remembered what God said, he what God told Moses. He lived in that promise. Listen, the life of faith that both we and Caleb live is not a life that is based on how the world measures time with the revolving of the earth. The world sees long years, but the calendar of one who lives by faith knows that Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The eyes of faith are accustomed to see every day as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. The promises of God are sure to come true, whether in Abraham's lifetime or in his descendants. God, listen, God was well able to extend Caleb's life and to protect him until Caleb stood on his possession from God. God promised it to him. God kept him alive for the 45 years so that he could stand on his promise from God. And this is our first lesson from Caleb's plea to Joshua that whoever builds their life on God's promises has the guarantee of a better and glorious future. The New Testament is filled with promises for the believer. Listen, will you take hold of these promises and hide them in your heart? Will, will you remember them as Caleb did? during times of difficulties, when it seems like the decisions of others are, are controlling your life and putting you farther and farther away from that, those pro that promise's fulfillment. Yeah, I'm sure Caleb got all excited. I'm going to promise Caleb. God says, I'm going to promise Caleb that land. The children of Israel sinned, but he's now he, because of their decisions, Caleb had to wait had to, had to wait 40 extra years before he could he could experience God's promise where he could stand on God's promise. Yeah, Caleb was bound by other people's decisions and and he had to wait. Sometimes we sometimes because of other people's decisions we don't get the promises of God right away, but for sure they're going to happen. You can guarantee it. God's word comes true. God God when God speaks, it's going to happen. Listen, we have tremendous promises for us to lay hold upon and to look forward to a great and to a bright future, just like Caleb did. And again, don't don't put God in a box and say, well, this this promise has got to happen, you know, by next week or by next month. It may not happen for 20 years because of other people's decisions. It may, it may take a while for that promise to happen. But for, but for sure, God can extend your life and God can bring you into that promise. God, Remember, with God, one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. But for sure, listen, if God spoke it, it's coming true. It's going to come true. All right, we're going to continue on and we're going to finish our, our lesson on uh, Caleb's Caleb's inheritance. We got three more lessons to learn concerning Caleb's uh, plea before Joshua, but we'll get that next time. So until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.